morning, everyone. So for this project, uh, we wanted to test the types of signals we can pull out of social media, and uh, in particular to, uh, to unemployment, and see what kind of signals we can get from there, from, from social media, and then also um, to be able to use some predictive analytics and correlation analysis to be able to help policymakers um, make better use of those signals. You know, and, and while while the topic of analyzing social media is a new one and it's an exciting one, the good news is that you know the processes used to analyze social media are are the same processes used by you know the official statistics community and large corporations. You know, to 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 sift through massive amounts of data, pull out the hidden trends and uh, and hidden signals, and, and apply those into the forecasting models. And that SAS has been uh, helping those organizations do for about 35 years. So that's the good news. The only thing new here that um, that that needs to be brought to the table are um, essentially how do you take something that's qualitative and unstructured, like free flowing text, and be able to quantify that. And for that, we brought some intellectual property. It, because once it's quantified, then it can be used to, uh, you know, through all the same uh, the same processes used by the statistics offices in the private sector as well. And so, um, and so, our goal was to see, okay, how do we, how can we use social media to fill some data gaps in what information that policymakers have today, bring some additional color and insights into, um, you know, in, into the issues that they're looking into. In this case, for unemployment. Um, and then be able to, and, and it's really a complement to official statistics, right? I mean, and so we pulled uh, over half a million uh, entries from uh, from public, you know, web web blogs, forums, um, news feeds, and so forth. And in many ways, you guys, it's 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 no different than how people have interacted with organizations in the past. People used to write letters, pick up the phone, uh, answer surveys, that kind of thing. But now, in the age of big data. We have millions of people doing that all at the same time, and all doing just doing it online. So we need to increase our ability to be able to listen to the masses and, and, and aggregate all that information because it's a rich data source. And so what we did was we built a uh, a dashboard with the global pulse to surface up these um, a lot of these findings. And what we did was we started with the the official statistics in the upper left hand corner there. Uh, you know, the official statistics on unemployment rates. And then in the upper right-hand corner, uh, then what we did was we categorized all of the diff you know, the universe of social media uh, over the two-year period for, for the U.S. and Ireland. And we categorized all the unemployment talk um, by, by coping strategies and by categories. So on any given month, you know, based on what's happening that month, what are people talking about with regards to unemployment? Is it, is it transportation? Is it housing? Is it education? Is it just you know the bills and so forth? In the lower right-hand corner, we're able to give it uh, just you know a, another layer, uh, peel back another layer, and to and to um, analyze the sentiments and moods that that people are expressing with regards to unemployment. So we can look over time: is confidence increasing, or on any given month, you know what are the posts about? So um, you know, so in the upper right-hand corner, we have the topics people are talking about on any given month. Lower right-hand corner, we have kind of the sentiments people are expressing. Right? And then the lower left-hand corner is kind of where we put it all together. And we say, okay, so what is the correlation? And, 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 and um, you know, we're able to find some great relationships, you know. So um, to get into the, we have Thomas Lehman from our, uh, the director from our advanced <coughs> analytics lab to tell you about how we, how we surfaced up these results and, and how we found the, the, the statistically significant, co significant correlations uh, between, between some of these metrics. <clears throat> well, Lisa, as you can imagine, it's a huge amount of work going from a mountain of unstructured data and putting it into a quantitative form for analytics. Um, the the SAS team's approach towards this problem is to first pull data. And you mentioned we're pulling from news groups, forums, blogs, and also traditional social media sources like Twitter, Facebook, and etc. And then we go through some due diligence to make sure we have confidence and our corpus of documentation. So we go through a filtering, cleansing process, and then we're going to go through a two-stage process of quantifying the data. First, um, with respect to key themes that we find within the data, and then second, also 
with respect to sentiment. Um, we use text analytics to find these key themes within the corpus of the document with respect to unemployment. And for example, um, when we looked across Ireland and the U.S., some of the key themes that thought fell out uh, were concern around loss of housing, uh, cuts in discretionary spending, changes in transportation modes, etc. And these naturally manifest themselves into coping strategies that the populations are having to take after they see spikes in unemployment. We also then enrich the data with other um, sources, which include macroeconomic sources and also unemployment trends for the last 24 months. And then we apply analytics towards this data. And really, the name of the game of this is to try to find leading indicators for spikes on unemployment, and then also what happens after we see a spike in unemployment in terms of coping strategies that, that the population is facing. Um, we quantify the data with respect to um, the sentiment using a piece of SAS intellectual property known as a mood state taxonomy. And what the mood state taxonomy does is on a per document basis quantifies it per the author's psychological or emotional state at the time of writing the post. And it's hierarchical in nature. You can see we have 12 dimensions built in here, six positive, which are shown in the green, and then they're converts, six negatives shown in the red. And this, these roll up, obviously, into six dimensions, for example, composure, confidence, clear-headedness, energy, et cetera. So we have a wide array of variables that we're able to come in and correlate against the unemployment events. We're also able to quantify these dimensions of mood state per the different coping strategies as well. So we're going through a two-stage modeling process, first of all, to quantify each document into the different uh, um, key themes or coping strategies that we found, and then also per sentiment, and before we apply, uh, apply the analytic processes. Now, when we apply the analytic processes, what we're doing is really normalizing time, normalizing time around spikes of unemployment. And then what we're looking for is we're offsetting the other data on a monthly basis, since we have all the data bucketed monthly, and then looking for statistically significant relationships um, from when we see a spike in unemployment to either a coping strategy or a leading indicator from what we're seeing within the social media data. What we're showing right here, this has actually been filtered around public transportation and is specific to the United States. Now the vertical line there, again, we're normalizing time around unemployment spikes. So what we see here, this is um, U.S. public transportation, and when we see a, a spike in unemployment in the U.S., uh, what we see in the social listening data is an increase in chatter around uncertainty around public transportation usage. And when these bars go above that gray area, that is a statistically significant relationship. So for example, within the U.S., every time we see a spike in unemployment, <coughs> we see a statistically significant relationship such that the population has concern about the usage of public transportation. Now, if we pull out a couple other of these and study them in detail, um, this is a lagging indicator, a coping strategy around transportation repossession. And what we see, again, with time normalized, where the vertical bar um, indicates a spike in unemployment in the U.S., three uh, months later, what we see is a spike in the social listening data around public transportation, or rather, a transportation repossession. So that's a coping strategy that the U.S. is having to deal with three months after a spike in unemployment. Now, if we look at the actual data, this is the statistical output, you can clearly see this relationship. Ooh, I had some animation built in, but I'm not sure if it's uh, supported here. At any rate, I was going to show you basically how this shows, and if we show the 24 months in time, what happens is you'll see a spike, and immediately following, three months later, we see a spike in the social media chatter around public um, transportation repossession here. We're also looking for leading indicators, items that can give us indication that we're about to see a spike in unemployment. A lot of times this comes from the social listening data. And this, is, this one here is with respect uh, to increased chatter around public transportation usage within the U.S. 
And you can see this is a very significant relationship. So as we see a heavy spike in the social listening chatter with respect to public transportation, one month following, we see the, um, uh, the increase in spikes in unemployment. We've summarized some of the key findings here with respect to the United States and Ireland. Would you like to walk through those, Isa? Sure, yeah. So, you know, what we see here as we wrap up, right, uh, when we talk, chatter about unemployment, if it comes, if it uh, ex uh, exhibits a hostile or depressed kind of emotion, right, uh, will increase four months before a spike in unemployment. And, and it's logical to us that, you know, depression and hostility will happen. But now policymakers have a time frame that we can quantify statistically that, hey, you know, you've got about a four-month runway here before we start seeing, you know, increase in layoffs and so forth, right? And then after that, the event, certainly two months after the event, talk about housing loss, and, and three months after the event about um, about auto, automobile repossessions. Uh, and then if you look at the, if you look at Ireland, a different country, English speaking, yes, but different culture and so forth. So, so, so the conversations, the, the you know, just the, the, the dynamic is a little different. And so what we see is that anxious uh, chatter goes up, confused, um, confused emotions go up, confused chatter goes up, and confident chatter goes down before on a, uh, an, an actual unemployment spike, which you see there in the red, right? And then after that, talk about, you know, travel, travel cancellations and, and, and uh, you know, downgrading the housing follows as well. And, and again, the key here is that we're able to quantify it. And so just, just in, sum, in summary, you know, we believe pretty strongly that yes, you know, social media is, is an incredibly valuable source of, of signals to bring color and insights and, and fill in existing data gaps. The, uh, the private sector is already using this to, to great success, to increase agility and efficiency and so forth, um, as well as some governments as well. And then you can layer on top of that some predictive analysis, right, to, to do better planning and what if scenarios and so forth. Um, and, and then this obviously can be expanded to include other social listening sources or other countries as well. And, um, and, and so the technology is there. And really what, what this allows is for people with the domain expertise that those representing the room to come in and ask the right questions and ask better questions and let the data tell the story after.